have a really really special guest. people there and welcome to my show let's talk show one can judge the heart of a man by the way he treats animals my guest for today is a man known for his dedication compassion and giving services and shelter to the abandoned victims of cruelty and suffering pets those pets who are forgotten and become homeless are embraced and provided all care and shelter by this kind hearted man and his team of dedicated staff and volunteers I would like to welcome Rick Persante to my show. Hi, Akta. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. How are you doing this morning, Rick? Do, doing very well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, I would like to know what is the mission of your this human society? Can you talk a bit about it, please? Sure. Um, our mission as an organization is we are dedicated to protecting and making life better for animals and connecting the communities that care about them in the communities of Oakland and Milton. That's really what we do as an organization. Wow. Um, when did you actually start? When did this organization actually started? It actually started a long time ago, back probably around 1938. Uh, so it's been going an awful long time, thanks to the dedication of many, many volunteers. And over the years, it's continued to just grow and to build. And it's also expanded its services and in reach into the community over that time and into a quite a vibrant small organization right now. We will. Uh, let's have a look at the video. So I actually have a surprise guest that I wanted to show you. Oh, so sure, I'm, please. I'm going to bring them on right now. Okay. That's so cute. This, this is Ellen. Hello, Ellen. And Ellen is one of our puppies in our shelter right now. She's nine weeks old. Okay. And she is a cross between a husky and a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And this is really what we do as an organization. We, we rescue these types of animals. In this case, um, she came to us from Northern Manitoba as a transfer, a rescue group, brought them all the way to Ontario. And as part of our services, what we do is we then help these animals. Um, we, we take them into our care. Um, if they require it, we give them medical treatment. We will also spend time looking at um, sort of nurturing them and putting them into foster homes so that they're able to um, get, the use, get used to being with families and get socialized. And then we put them up for adoption. And in the case of Ellen here, she's nine weeks old. And she's soon going to be spayed as a young pup. Um, she was a, a litter with nine other pups in the family. And uh, we're just delighted to be able to show you the type of animals that we work with each and every day here at the Oakland Milton Humane Society. Beautiful. It's a very beautiful puppy. Yes. I wish there was some kind of a technology where I can put my hand <laughs> in the screen and cuddle the little puppy and play with the puppy a little, for a little time, you know? Yeah, they're, they're re it's really interesting because it's re working for a shelter, it's really hard because you want to take every animal home. Um, and every animal that comes into our care has a different story. And for yeah. us, you know, we have animals that are strays and they come into our care. We have other animals that, unfortunately, for various reasons, the family has to surrender the animal to us. And mm -hmm. so we gladly take the animal. Um, and in some cases, we have animals that have been, as you mentioned in your opening comments that have been victim to cruelty and abuse. Yes. And so we also assist them in that regard. But I think I think our little friend here is getting a, a little nervous and uh, <laughs> anxious to go back to her mommy. So I'm going to pass it over and I'll allow our interview okay. to continue. Yes, sure. Okay, uh, let's, let's play the video my team has made. Terrific. <laughs>
back. Thank you. Okay. Apart from the doves and cats, what other animals do you give shelter? We actually provide shelter to uh, exotic animals. We have everything from gerbils to guinea pigs to rabbits. And of course, our organization also supports a significant amount of work related to wildlife. In fact, um, over this past year, one third of all our calls that we receive at the shelter are to support wildlife in our community. Like? Um, geese, um, coyotes, um, ducks, you name it. We've had um, pigs, we've had roosters. We actually have so many different animals that have been brought to the organization um, that we've been able to care for. And either in the case of wildlife, move them to rehabilitation centers um, or to farms where they can be looked after. Um, or in the case of domestic animals, hopefully to their forever homes. So you you do you train people or like how do you go and rescue? It's not it's not so safe. Also, they're wild. They can attack you. Yes, we have um, a team of animal protection officers. Um, mm -hmm. We the Oakville and the Humane Society actually operates the contract for animal control for the town of Oakville, and so as a result, we have a team of officers who are trained and they go into the community to support stray um, rescues. Um, investigate uh, circumstances where standards of care are not being met. And so it's it's a fairly intensive training um, that in, is involved with those officers. And then in addition to that, um, when the animals are brought into the shelter by these officers, we have a team here of uh, registered veterinary technologists, okay. as well as an animal care manager, who ensure working under the auspices of a voluntary veterinarian to ensure that the animals are well cared for. Um, so. What we would do is we would do a review of the animal's health. At that point in time, we would range for medication. If any sort of surgery or treatment or dental work needs to be done, we would arrange for that as well, all at the cost of the Oakland Milton Humane Society. Okay, so do you, do you have a small animal sh uh, hospital as well, some veterinarians as well working with you? No, we don't have a veterinarian on site. We actually work with community veterinarians who donate their time. Uh, we have. Um, about four veterinarians who give up their time to come in and support us um, mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. And um, we send our animals out to local um, veterinarian clinics to have the necessary medical procedures completed. How has, the, how has the situation been during this pandemic? It's been interesting because it, it really changed for us as an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, right away when everything closed down, that meant we had to close down um, all of our adoptions, all of our education program that we offer for children. And you can imagine how, how challenging that would be for a small shelter, even though we were deemed to be an essential service. And so for us, what we did immediately was we changed our business model. So we began to move the animals in our care out to foster families much, much quicker than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. And so now we are probably see about two thirds of our animals in foster care and one third of the animals actually in the shelter. And so it's a, a business model that will likely change for us and, and continue even beyond COVID. Because what it does is it, it the animals aren't left in the shelter, they're in a loving home where they can get socialization, experience what it's like to be with a family or an individual, and then hopefully be ready for a, an adopting family um, in the very near future after that. So that was one of the significant changes that we had to, to endure. On the um, educational front, all of our educational programming actually stopped. And so it was really challenging for us because we provide such a vital role in the community yes. through our, our kindness club, as well as our youth leadership program. And so what we did was we took it upon ourselves to apply for some funding. And mm -hmm. we were very successful to have funding from the Oakfield Community Foundation. Uh, it was a partnership between us, a small business and charity partnership. And we receive funding to enhance our virtual platforms. And mm -hmm. so what that's done for us is it now to allow it now allows us to be able to do virtual education programs. So we do virtual dog training. We also are going to do virtual kids camps and we also do virtual tours of the shelter. All things that have been so important to people as we engage our community. Interesting. I didn't know. I never thought about this. Like this can also go virtual. I have a question from the viewer. What can one do to be part of the foster family with your organization? Uh, absolutely. What we do is we accept applications that come in um, mm -hmm. to be fosters. 
Um, as in any volunteer organization, we do a, a rigorous process to interview the volunteer and then from there uh, we arrange to have training and onboarding for them in order to be a foster family. Um, what I can tell you is that through COVID, it has been tremendous, the interest that we have received for people willing to be fosters. In fact, we probably, in our first few weeks, we probably were having hundreds and hundreds of people come forward oh, yes. um, to become foster families for us. Um, and to this point for us organizationally, um, we are probably sitting with 187 fosters um, because there's been such interest. And the, the challenge for us right now is we don't have enough animals to provide to our fosters. Um, and that's because within the marketplace, um, there, there isn't an awful lot of animals. Um, people are holding on to their animals longer, and which is what we want. And we're seeing fewer surrenders. And I think probably as you well know, right now, because of COVID, everybody wants a dog, a cat, yeah. or some type of animal to keep them company. And so for what we're seeing is that people are really interested in keeping them. And as a result, um, there's not a lot of animals that are available right across the country. But have you cal calculated if um, the large number of people come back after the pandemic gets over? How are you going to adjust with so many pets? That's, that's one of our concerns, for sure, that we're going to see uh, a real influx as people return to work and maybe their schedules don't they don't allow for the opportunity to care for the animal the same way. So we this is another reason why we're preparing to ensure that our foster families are ready for that on on um, that influx if it in fact does materialize. But right now we have been knock on wood, we've been very fortunate not to see uh, an influx and people are holding on to their animals. But yeah. we are planning for that day and uh, we'll we'll see if that truly does happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a big concern. Yes. Um, one of the questions from my team members, what are the minimum requirements for the acceptance to be the foster care, the foster family? Um, and how long is the off, process? Yeah, the process isn't um, extremely long. It depends on the number of volunteers that have applied and by the time we're able to get through the processing. But it's usually a couple of weeks and it's an application that's then a phone call that would then result in terms or a video call like we're having today where people are interviewed and asked questions they look towards obviously if people have um, previous experience in the family working with animals um, and that they themselves have provided um, good ongoing care to their pets so that means regular veterinary checkups and vaccinations etc because that really signifies to us yes. that those individuals care about animals and are going to look after the animal's best interest when a foster animal would be in their care. So we look towards those. And then if the volunteer is accepted, then we go into that onboarding and training process. And that's where we would provide the volunteer with um, a background about how we do the program. For example, if you had a, a dog, like if Helen, Ellen, for example, if you had Ellen in your care and she ran into some medical issues, how you go about working with us for treatment options or working with a veterinarian. So we walk through those sorts of situations uh, for each of the uh, volunteers as well. And then there's ongoing support that we provide with our volunteer coordinator and our um, registered veterinary technologist and our foster uh, coordinating team. They're the ones that are always in contact just to make sure that the experience is positive on both sides of the equation. So much of hard work and so much of dedication you guys are putting into this. Uh, I have a question in my mind, like, uh, what if a pet doesn't get adopted? Yep. Um, and we actually have that sometimes. So what we'll do is um, we, we have to try to find out why a pet isn't adopted. And mm -hmm. so, for example, if a dog comes into our care and the dog has behavioral issues, um, we have a dog trainer on site and that dog trainer will work with that animal to try to change some of those behaviors and be able to equip the animal with the necessary skills um, moving forward going into the community. We also at that point in time that if, if the dog's taking long to be adopted, we really look at how we're actually marketing and talking about that dog in the community on our website, on other websites, and our social media. Are we giving the right information? Are we portraying the best attributes of this animal, or is it only focusing on maybe some other things to look out for? So we take a look at that as well. In the long instances where an animal isn't adopted, what we often do is we will reach out to other shelters because 
a dog that might not be ideal in Oakland Milton might work extremely mm -hmm. well in Guelph or down in St. Catharines. And so we'll work with our peers across the province to be able to move it, transfer another dog to a different part of the province. And then failing that, what we also do is we work with rescue groups across the, across the um, province of Ontario. So that if we had, for example, uh, a shepherd and that shepherd was um, had a lot of behavioral issues, etc., we would try to find a rescue group that all they do is specialize in rescues related to shepherds. And we might send that dog to that rescue group because we know they're specialists at being able to manage that. And that dog may in fact stay with that um, or with that um, rescue group for you know for a while before it's, it leaves that rescue group, or it might stay there forever with a family of other shepherds. So it really depends on what the situation is around each of those animals. Very well explained. One last question. Who do you, who does sponsor this? Is this the federal government, province government, private funders, sponsors? Who takes care of the expenses here? We, we are so grateful to our donors. These are individual donors like you and I who um, are so grateful to the work that we do and, and the love of animals that they support our mission. We also have a number of corporate partners and are always looking for opportunities to partner with different um, corporate partners in different ways. And of course, we have recently been looking at a, a number of different sources for funding. And we've done this through special grants, um, both at the local, municipal, regional, and provincial level. Uh, because our work is so important and the demands that are being placed on us in the community and, and what people need are growing. And so as a result, continued funding and support from our donors are, are, are just paramount. And I would also say, we also were able to do this through the support. Um, we have over 450 volunteers um, who've given over 27,000 hours to our organization. And so without their support, we couldn't do what we do. Yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Karek, you are doing a noble job, a great work that a lot of us can't even dream of doing. Continue giving services to the suffering pets and keep collecting blessings. Wish you all the very best and thank you so much for joining us today here. Thank you, Ekta, for having me. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.